Hey everyone, it's Sam here and today I'm going to show you how to make a really fun card, which I'm going to show you in a moment. But it's using these brand new, beautiful, it's called Floral Calendar and it is different flowers for each month of the year. Now Craft Sash have done these before and they've brought them back again because they were incredibly popular. There's also a lovely sentiment set here as well and it's got things like for someone special born in and then on each of the stamp sets you can find stamps with the word of the month and also the name of the flower so you've got your stephanotis for january you've got tulip for february daffodil for march lilac for april peony for may iris for june sunflower for july poppy for august hyacinth for september Aster for October, Camellia for November, and the Narcissus for December. So if any of you joined me for my Facebook Live recently, I made this gorgeous triple easel card. And this was using Papercraft Society, it was kit number 54. But I thought, I've just got all these florals that have landed on my desk, let's use one of them to create this card here. And this is what I'm gonna show you how to make today. I've also got matching envelopes and I use my wax seals on those at the end. So I'll show you all of that. It's a very, very lovely card. You will probably need an instruction for the recipient of this one, unless you're sending it to a crafty friend. So I would just pop maybe a little instruction in the envelope or you're bound to speak to them or they're gonna thank you for the card. You could just say to them, did you manage to display it correctly? These just pop behind these little stoppers here. So the whole thing lies flat. I have made mine bigger. And I've made a custom envelope. If you don't want it to be any bigger than the five by, it's about six and three quarters size card, then you want to keep everything within there. But there was something quite nice about having this large flower at the back and then a kind of decrease in size as they get to the front there with that beautiful sentiment. It's very, very easy. You don't need any specialty dies to make the card base. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make them. So I've chosen to use the month of October and the Aster flower. However, I have also gone ahead and coloured the beautiful iris, which is this month, June, and also the daffodil. And you will see some lovely card tutorials with these ones. And I'm sure I'm going to feature some other ones as well. So keep a look out for those. So I've stamped uh, one, two, three of them. I've cut the top off of that one so I've got three tops and they're going to be the stoppers I've then used the same beautiful friend stamp that I showed on that other one so that's from my floral verses this is made to surprise along with the that's the brick wall embossing folder there so it's really really nice and I've already gone ahead and embossed my panels there and then I'm going to be using, I'm not sure which one yet, but I'm going to be using one of the sentiments from the floral calendar stamp set in a moment, once I've put it all together. So I've got my 5 by 7 shop brought card blank here. If you don't have this, you want to cut, if you don't have a shop brought one, just cut a piece of 10 by 7 and then score along the long side at 5 inches. I'm going to trim this one down now because it's easier to divide six and three quarters into three than it is seven into three so i'm just going to let's use the other trimmer just trim a little bit off of this so six and three quarter there we go and then i'm going to open it up and i'm going to use another trimmer <laughs> i'm going to use this one to start with and i'm going to cut at every two and a quarter just down to this first score line so just lining this up with two and a quarter and i'm just going to cut down to the middle there okay and then i'm just going to if i fold that one under and then again line up at two and a quarter you can go up from this one as well there's a little marker on the side of the blade here so you can go that way as well and now you've got your three sections which are each two and a quarter wide and then you want to score from the top left to the bottom right in each section i'm just going to use my self-healing mat just because it's a little bit easier to score on a softer surface so top left to the bottom right in each of these sections so i'm just going to lay my stylus down first and then line up the ruler just go over that a couple of times like so and then again into this section okay and then you just want to fold very carefully each of those score lines so you have a mountain fold 
I'd recommend using a softer cardstock, so maybe not your 300 GSM. The first card I showed you was using a heavier weight and I just got a little bit of cracking. It's not noticeable, but I know it's there. So this is, because it's a shop brought envelope, this is more around like 230, 220 GSM. So you want to just go a little bit softer, just because you're working on angles and these points, it's easier with a lighter weight. So now you'll see, we've already got that card shape, but we need to add a bit of weight now with the mats and layers so these kind of stay down. And you'll probably find you don't always need the stopper, but I think for the person that you're sending it to, it'd be nice for them to just kind of position it properly. So then you want to cut yourself three pieces of two by four and a quarter. Get them all embossed if you are embossing them, might be pattern paper. And then you're going to cut from the bottom left up to the top right. And that will give you your panels to cover. In fact, make sure I've got the right ones so the kind of brick wall does kind of join up but you'll see there focus on the kind of right angle corner of each piece so that's the same and then everything else will line up so I'm going to stick those down on all those sections okay so happy with all of that so now I want to start positioning these so I do want this big one right at the back and like I said it will mean that you'll need a bigger envelope if you want to keep everything within this five by seven or five and three um six and three quarter size then you can't have anything popping up past the top here so whatever you stick on this back one so it was a sentiment make sure when it it's flat it doesn't pop over the top but I'm not going to bother about that because I don't mind making a bigger envelope so I think I don't know which way I think I want the stem coming down that way. So I think I might just snip along there and stick this one like so. I think that looks nice. Yeah, that's going to stand really nicely. So I'm going to have that one at the very back. Then in the middle, I want kind of three of them. So I'm thinking... I think I'm going to trim along here and cut this piece out here. Yeah, so I've just trimmed along there. You're not going to notice it because it's going to be tucked around. Because it's going to be tucked in the bottom. Now I've kind of got, yeah, that looks nice. So I'm going to have that one and then that one's slightly smaller. Still unsure on the front, but for the stoppers, I'm just going to pop each one over the top just so I can trim them the same. And the idea is is they will be raised up on a bit of foam like so but it looks like the stems are coming out from underneath so it's this end here that's actually going to hold that together but I think that works really well I just want to make sure they're all the same I'm going to keep also little things like these little buds because I can use those I might use those around the sentiment okay so I'm going to get these stuck down get the stoppers stuck down and then play around with the front That's what I'm up to so far. I think it looks really nice. With the sentiment, I've started sticking this one behind. I've just trimmed this one down. I just want a little bit of the pink poking out. Like so, and then maybe, yeah, that looks pretty. Pop that one. Let's have that just around here. Like so, and then maybe this one. There okay, so that looks really pretty for the topper. So that's going to get probably stick more just that kind of corner. I lay that down because I want to make sure that this is straight when it's displayed. So that's how it looks when it's displayed. Isn't that stunning? So pretty. Really, really love that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a piece of four and a half by six and a half. And then a piece of four and a quarter by six and a quarter mat and layer them and stick them on the back and I'm going to stamp for someone special born in and then I'm going to use the October stamp and have that as the message inside I think that will look really nice
Okay, so there is everything finished on the front. It has a beautiful profile. I think that's just stunning. And then on the back, I've added the panels there and just those leftover flowers. I just cut little right angles in the corners. And then that lovely sentiment for someone special born in October. I think that's a gorgeous card. So now I'm going to make my envelope because I do need to make a bespoke one for this because obviously I've made mine taller. You can just pop yours into a 5x7 envelope. That will be fine. But I'm just using my papers here. These are the 12x12 12 12, uh, Sweet Candy papers and the weight of them because it's uh, 150 GSM. It's perfect for envelopes. So this is the same as the envelope that I made here. And all I did to do that was fold this all down flat. I'm going to just pop this on a diagonal orientation. Now I need to imagine that the end is here. So I need to kind of imagine an imaginary corner there. And it's the corners that you want to make sure are kind of the same distance away. So I can see I'm pretty far off here. Just roughly. Oh, I think that's about right. I'm happy with that. And then I'm just going to fold up. Keep it nice and um, straight as well. So I think it's more like probably there. So I'm going to fold this one up. And you want the point here to run with the point at the top. Again, keeping that all nice and straight. I'm going to fold that back down. And I will end up cutting that point off. And then this one's going to come right over. Again, they should... They do lay perfectly over the top, so I think I've got it as pretty centred as I can. And I'm going to fold this one back up. It's only because it's very long. If it was shorter, then i just leave the points on. And then I'm going to fold in all of this side. This is why you want that paper, because you're folding up, you know, multiple layers. And on this end, you've just got to be careful, because obviously that's where my detail is. But I don't want to fold it in, so I've got the same kind of amount there, so that's about right. Okay, so now take that all out. I've got tutorials showing you how to do this. So don't worry about, you know, remembering it all now. I show you how to work out the size paper that you need. I'll pop that tutorial at the end. So I'm just gonna snip this off completely because I don't want the point. And then in all of these little corners, I'm just gonna cut out this little triangle. I like to just round off that bit there. Just makes it a little bit neater and more like an envelope. And then again, so I'm just coming around with a little curve there. Just that rounded edge. Right, so just repeat that. So I'm going to cut that piece off and then cut these two. Okay, and then just give your sides all a good fold again. So I'm going to have this one stuck over the top. So I just want to run some tape around this side and this side. I'm just going to use my half inch tape. And I don't want to go right into the middle because there is a bit of a gap. And then just fold that over. Make sure I've not got that sticky tape note. Okay, and then pop the card in there. Now I'm not going to be sending this straight away. So I'm just going to fold that over. I've got this piece of wax paper and that's going to go in between so I can pour the wax but it won't seal the envelope so I can do that at a later date. What I will do before I actually add that is just run some more tape along the top here and then that way when I do go to send it I can just peel that off, seal it and the wax seal will be on top. So I'm going to get the wax all warmed up. I'm going to decorate the front, choose some stamps like I've done here. These are just all for decoration, but I really like the effect it gives. And these little stamps here are from my Happy Mail stamp set. And all of this is always linked in the description box below the video. So that's the envelope all decorated. And I've got my Happy Birthday wax seal. I'm just going to pop that down there. My wax nice and hot. And you just want to pour it so that some of it overhangs. Like so. And then place that down. And don't worry if you get some bubbles. If you've got your heat tool at hand, just give it a blast with the heat and that will pop all your bubbles. 
So whilst that's just drying, I've got all the pens here as a reminder to tell you what ones I use to colour in the flowers there. And these are the ones. So for the actual flower, it's 125 and then 87 and number one. And then for the stems, I used 46 and 52. Okay, so just give it a little wiggle. It will pop straight off. I thought I'd go for more of a tone on tone. I think that goes really well. You can see now. Once that's closed, how that would all look. Okay, so just bring both the cards back in again, just show you them. All oh, that beautiful detail, such a lovely style, really unusual. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial today and it's given you some nice inspiration and possibly for some of you, a new card fold that you've maybe not seen before. As always, all the product that I've used today, you can find individually linked in the description box below. All of the new calendar, flowers you can find by clicking here I'll take you straight to the craft slash website make sure you subscribe to my channel and that way you won't miss out on any future videos and i'll have that envelope playlist coming up now as well so you can go and check that out take care and i'll see you all again soon bye